Today, I'm featuring Haley Graves. Some might know Haley as the former team reporter for the XFL Wildcats and host for Major League Soccer's Los Angeles Football Club. Or you might know Haley from her graphic designing with Fox Sports and then eventually for building up the social media platforms for Angel City FC of the National Women's Soccer League. I know Haley from her reporting with Laura Oakman's galvanized boot camps. And Lions fans, if you don't already, might know her as wide receiver Josh Reynolds' fiance. Haley is an ultra talented human being, and this is her story. Haley, we talked about it. This is, I want to say, five years in the making. So yeah. I was an intern with the LA Rams when you and Josh had come in and yep. signed with the LA Rams. So that was that his rookie year, 2017. Yes. Yeah. Well, yes, because he was drafted. He was drafted in 2017. Mm-hmm. So his first season in the league was yeah, 2017. And now five years later. You've moved a couple cities, yes. finally landed here in Detroit. Uh, we keep, uh, the stories kept going parallel. We did Galvanize. Yep. Um, not together, but did Galvanize, which shout out to Laura Oakman. She has the best broadcasting boot camps for young women. Um, and you've just been tackling every single, I guess, stop along the way. And it's been incredibly impressive. Sports broadcasting is yep. your background, Texas A&M. That's where yep. you met Josh at, which we would love to hear that story. <laughs> um, yeah, so so let's start. How did you and Josh meet, by the way, Josh Reynolds, big smooth, um, will be your husband. Do we have a date for the yes, wedding? Yes, July 1st, 2023. Ooh, yes. it's coming up. I know. It actually comes a lot faster than they like you to think. Um, but yeah, so how we met well, I was working for the football team. Mm-hmm. Um, I started working specifically for the team my junior year at Texas A&M and doing very similar stuff to what I kind of do now. Mm-hmm. I helped start the social media platforms for the football program, um, was like team videographer, photographer, kind of just wore whatever hat I could possibly wear for the team. Um, and his first season was also in 2014. So those yeah. like really aligned. Um, but Josh is a shy guy. He's very introverted. I don't think he actually spoke to me for probably the first year and a half of us both being on the sidelines with the same program. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do remember, and this will probably embarrass him, but so like I said, like I was dabbling in photography. They needed someone to do that. And I will never forget, like I could reenact it, watching him run from one practice field to the other, like taking a photo and just seeing his smile and being mm-hmm. like, oh, like, huh, who is that? That's like, a nice who smile. Is that? <laughs> yes, like, like just being like captivated by his smile essentially. But again, mm-hmm. He didn't talk to me for like a year and a half. I actually think the first time we spoke was when I had to do an on-camera interview with him. Um, I've which seen is, the interview. Yes. So there's like, well, there's two. The very first one, I don't think I've shared that recently. Mm-hmm. But it's, yeah, it's pretty funny to look back on those and be like, wow, the first time we ever spoke was me interviewing you. So you guys have known each other for about eight years. Yeah. However, whatever that math is. Has the journey not been just insane? It kind of has been. Um, I don't know that him nor I would have ever thought that we would have gotten to this point honestly Mm -hmm. um like I just used to started once we you know kind of were building that friendship I would just poke fun at him and like one conversation that always sticks out to me was for his 21st birthday him one of his teammates and his family went to Vegas for his 21st birthday and I just remember coming back and being like you know I was like trying to talk to him and I was like hey I was like how is Vegas and he was like what happens in Vegas stays in uh, Vegas. And that was like, he played it like so cool. Uh-huh. And um, and then just from there, like the ball kind of got rolling. We ended up going on a mission trip and serving in Haiti through mm-hmm. Texas A&M football. And I got to go because I documented the whole trip. Um, and it was there that we got to know one another deeper than surface level. Um, mm-hmm. And so then, yeah, things really just took off from there. It was pretty much solidified after that Haiti trip. Oh my gosh. Yeah. What were you doing in Haiti? We so Texas A&M decided they partnered with Mission of Hope and mm-hmm. took ooh, about 25 30 football players, um women from the volleyball team and then a couple women from our soccer team and took us all on a mission trip for a week long vacation, not a vacation. We were, <laughs> yeah. we were it was by far not a vacation, but uh-huh. we all went down to Haiti, mm-hmm. served for 6 days and then on the 7th day got to have like one day of vacation, but it was really cool. It was one of like the most pivotal moments I think of like my life. So, 
did they pick Josh or did he want to go? They yeah, they like they um definitely opened it up to any of the football players that mm-hmm. wanted to go. And actually it's funny that you bring that up because I haven't thought about this in a long time. I remember when he when we had our first informational meeting and he was there and I think he showed up late. <laughs> and after that, like that became like our bit that mm-hmm. I would like make sure that he was on time for the Haiti meetings. Like yeah. I'd be like, I'll text you to make sure you're coming and yep. make sure you're on time. Um and so then yeah, it's just like looking back there's just all these funny little things that I would try to make myself relevant to him Mm -hmm. and it just took a very long time for him to actually notice me so (laughs) it it took getting to Texas A&M for you guys to meet but you told me hometowns are 25 minutes away in San Antonio yep how did you not cross paths okay so he went to a high school named John Jay High School okay and San, I mean, San Antonio is a big place, right? Mm-hmm. But yeah, I had never even heard of his high school. Probably didn't even know that his part of San Antonio even really existed. Um, none of the schools that were in his school district mm-hmm. I had even heard of. Wow. And so, because I went to a small town named New Braunfels, and we played schools in San Antonio. Mm-hmm. But yeah, just genuinely never had heard of his high school ever. So I, I've got to imagine that's one of the first things you guys talked about when you met and you realized, oh my God. We live 25 minutes apart back home. I don't even know when we really made the connection. Uh It truthfully might have been the next time when I was interviewing him because Mm -hmm. I brought it up asking, you know, what does he miss the most about home? And so then we were able to find that common ground of San Antonio and New Braunfels. But yeah, I don't know. It just, but then again, going to Texas A&M, you know that everyone's going to be essentially from somewhere in Texas. Yes. So that's kind of a given. Safe to assume that. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. So you've been involved in sports you worked for a handful of different teams and professional teams. So what got you started in sports? Why did you take that route? Um, I've always loved them. Mm-hmm. I think I I love football like more than anything. Um, we sometimes joke and I'm like, I don't know, Josh, like me and you, like we're right there with like our love <laughs> of football. And, um, and so just growing up, being in Texas, we had season football tickets to A&M football games mm-hmm. since I was six months old. Um, and my parents always joke and say that I, where like all the other kids, right, are like playing with toys or coloring, whatever. Mm-hmm. Like I was sitting there asking my dad what was going on on the football field. Yeah. I can remember being in middle school and, you know, being able to carry my own weight in these conversations with boys about football. And that just became such a passion for me. Um, and then in high school, it really took, you know, a course of its own. I did the mm-hmm. whole morning announcements where you got to be on TV and like we actually learned how to use Final Cut in high school which is kind of that's very impressive um and so that was when I really started to fall in love with it heard about 12th Man Productions Mm -hmm. at Texas A&M and ended up applying became one of the first freshmen that they had hired in a good about 10 years um and so I did that for my first I guess three years at A&M, mm-hmm. just figuring everything out. I think I did everything under the sun that you could do in a control room. Um, and when finally the opportunity presented itself for me to just strictly work for the football program, I was like, I'm all in. Yes. It was one of those things that, you know, when opportunities come and the way I always decide to take an opportunity is I'm like, if I see someone else get this opportunity, am I going to be jealous? And if Ooh, the answer uh, is yes, that's a good then I immediately that. know that I need to take that opportunity. And so that's what I did. And then have just kind of tried to figure things out as I've gone. How much more difficult has it been, though, to figure those things out when you know in the back of your mind, you and Josh don't necessarily get to pick where right. you end up? Is, how much more difficult is it? So I, a lot of people, when he got drafted to the Rams, mm-hmm. I had already made the decision that I was going to go with him to whatever, whatever team he got drafted. Mm-hmm. Um, and I knew that I was just going to make it work. Yeah. Um, so LA, for a lot of people, was like, oh, that's a big market. That's really unfortunate for you. Um, but to me, I looked at it. I was like, are you kidding me? There's so many sports teams. There's high schools. There's so many professional teams. I was like, I just got to get my foot in the door somewhere Mm -hmm. and it was actually a lot harder than I thought I ended up covering high school football in Ventura County um, for our first six months there I think I got paid 50 bucks a game Uh, to go out and just get yes and just get 
like video footage of mm-hmm. these games. Um, and then after that was when I finally got my door, my foot in the door with Fox Sports mm-hmm. and was brought on as a freelancer for the Men's World Cup in 2018. So I worked for Fox just strictly doing Men's World Cup. I didn't know anything about soccer. Yeah. They were like, but you've worked in social before? I was like, yeah. Mm-hmm. So did that and... Um, through that process was how I decided. I was like, I'm going to try graphic design. I wanted to participate more than what I was getting to do during the World Cup. And I just started dabbling in Photoshop. And they were like, hey, we kind of like you doing this. And so I was like, okay, I'll keep doing it. And then next thing I know, I'm like making the championship graphic for the FIFA Men's World Cup for Fox Sports. And after that, they were like, hey, we like you enough to keep you on. You want to come run our NFL on Fox account? And then, Yeah. So that was kind of my beginning journey in L.A. Okay, so to pr- put this in perspective, that was, what, 2017? No, that was f- 2018. Yeah, spring of 2018. Okay, so you'd never done graphic design before that? No. I remember <laughs> seeing that FIFA World Cup um, championship graphic that you just said. That, and I'm like, she's been doing this for years. No. That is insane. No, honestly, shout out to Pinterest. That's it. I would just go and like look at Pinterest and I'd be like, I'm going to try and replicate this. And then I would do the best I could at replicating it and just started playing around in Photoshop and just taught myself, I guess. I've always had a creative brain though. Okay. But I think that's half of it. Yes. Because I can remember being in middle school and this is so random, but making, I would draw notes for my friends in class and then Mm -hmm. like leave them behind for them. So I even had a whole wall at my house was just all notes like from my friends it was just a bit that we would do Uh and so I think a lot of it honestly goes back to that headspace that I tapped into during the men's world cup and then for what I still to this day I do not know why God has blessed me with the ability to be proficient in graphic design but seriously it's the most insane thing ever I have no idea did you do anything else while you were learning no skill set no I literally just played around all day um not all day, but I think I, it was also a timing thing. So okay. at the time when I started working for Fox full time, mm-hmm. um, their NFL platform was changing look and feel. Okay. And so I got to have a pretty big hand in deciding what that new look and feel was going to mm-hmm. look like. So working with some other colleagues, designing that stuff it just really gave me the confidence that I was like, OK, I can do this. And then after that, obviously working every NFL Sunday for Fox Sports designing graphics on the fly, having to be very quick with it, just really whatever comes to my brain, putting it into the computer. Um, that just kind of just, I just kept going. I'm, I'm still trying to fathom this. I thought you had done it for, for forever. Mm-mm. Nope. Okay. So <laughs> that led you to, um, was it the XFL yeah. after that? Yeah. So I R. think R. you were one of the first hires for the yes. XFL. Yeah. I was the fifth hire um, for the Los Angeles team. Okay. Um, I finished my time up at Fox with the Women's World Cup. So mm-hmm. like went not one one solid year full circle with them um, and then decided to I just really missed the team environment. Mm-hmm. I was always looking for essentially my job that I did in college, yeah. um, being able to wear a bunch of different hats, building relationships, telling stories. Those were all really big like points of emphasis for me and what I wanted out of my career. Mm-hmm. And while working for Fox, was incredible and getting that experience you're sitting in a room just staring at tvs on game day and i was like that's not the experience that i want for my Mm -hmm. game days so um decided i was like the xfl's coming to town reached out to some people uh next thing you know i'm the fifth hire i think i was the second social media manager hired for the whole league and then it really just created its own beast from there so Mm -hmm. i was helping the you know, the league accounts with graphic design. I was managing our socials from the ground up. Um, And yeah, I, the XFL is great. I'm very happy it's coming back, but I just, it almost felt like the world, it was like a blip in like the anomaly of Uh the world because it, yeah, it was the greatest thing ever for the five weeks that it existed. (laughs) And you got to get back on camera doing that too as well. Yeah. So, um, was able to be the team reporter mm-hmm. um, for the Los Angeles Wildcats. They will not exist in this next round of XFL. <laughs> so, you know, it was a good time while it lasted. But yeah, that, mm-hmm. like I said, that's always been, you know, what I enjoy the most is just being able to tell stories and share them. And that was such a focal point of what we had to do with the XFL because mm-hmm. 
you're fighting against Los Angeles that had already nine other professional sports teams. Oh my gosh, so not many. to mention the powerhouse of UC- UCLA, USC. Mm-hmm. And so trying to make this very new professional sports team relevant, the only way you could do that was tell the players for the stories and make these yeah. fan bases want to root for the players. And so that was how I kind of then was able to do that role. And yeah, I to every single day, I love my time with the XFL. It was Did- very hard when it folded. Did Josh get to go to any of those game days? He did, actually, (gasps) because so since their season was in the spring, Mm -hmm. so Josh and my birthdays are two days apart. Oh, my gosh. So we always celebrate together. Yep. Um, And so he did. There was a game. I want to say our home opener for Los Angeles Wildcats in Carson was on his birthday Mm -hmm. of 2020. Mm -hmm. And so he showed support and came to my game. Oh, my gosh. That (laughs) is wonderful. Okay. And then you went back to – um the soccer pitch I think is the correct way to say it so how did that opportunity come up like we're going opportunity opportunity like people we we talked about it getting jobs in sports is very hard especially when who you know though right when you're planted in a city it's even harder right you know um so here we are going to another professional team how'd you get um is it LA Angels lost the Angel City FC is what it is now yes um so weirdly after the XFL folded um due to COVID. Yes. We not probably make probably two to three weeks later. I'm as many people were thinking, what am I about to do? Mm-hmm. What's going to happen? We still actually were optimistic that COVID was going to be a thing of the past quickly. And we thought honestly that the XFL would be able to revamp by the mm-hmm. fall. Yeah. Um, we were like, we know our draft is until November. So I was still optimistic, but then our head of PR for the XFL, she calls me and she's like, Hey, I have this really cool opportunity. This dope woman named Julie Ehrman, um, Natalie Portman, Serena Williams, like all these oh high gosh. profile celebrities are all coming together to start a professional women's soccer league or team in Los Angeles. And I was like, look, like, I know I worked the women's like, the women's world cup but soccer's not my thing I didn't even play soccer yeah. like I have no idea about anything with soccer mm-hmm. and she was like it's fine just meet Julie she was like we don't know anything about soccer either Natalie Portman doesn't know anything about soccer let's like let's just try you know she's like just meet them so I'm like okay so I have my conversations with Julie and immediately it was again going back to the is this an opportunity that if someone else got mm-hmm. it would I be jealous yeah and so I was like yes I, mm-hmm. This is just something that I need to try. And so I helped st- start their socials from the ground up. Basically doing what I did for the XFL a year prior was now doing it for a professional women's team. Yeah. Except it was on such a grander scale. Mm-hmm. Like I think within our first 24 hours of our Instagram being launched, we had 50,000 followers. For a women's soccer yes, team. Yes, for a Which women's soccer team. And yes. so being able wow. to be a part of Angel City and go from inception to my final time there was shortly mm-hmm. after we announced Kristen Press as our first player. Um, being able to really see it full circle to go from essentially when I got hired, it was called WFCLA okay. for Women's Football of Los Angeles. Like that okay. was it. Yeah, that'll, yes. that'll and hook the just people. Just being able to go um, a year and a half with them was absolutely incredible and now to see them in their first season Mm -hmm. I've you know been watching afar I haven't gotten to go to a game but people in Los Angeles care they I think they've sold out that stadium two three times 22,000 people showing up to watch women's soccer it's I'm like getting goosebumps talking about it because it's actually a really cool thing to see okay we have yet to mention something big that happened during all of this uh a little Super Bowl you oh, we yeah. went to a Super Bowl. Yes, we did. Ironically, though, um, I probably just like always like mall over that because so that was the year that I was working for Fox. Yeah, I only got to go to one game the entire season. Was it the Super Bowl? Um, okay, well, excluding the Super Bowl. Okay, in season, it was when the Rams and the Chiefs played on Monday Night Football. That was a great game. Yes, it was probably the best game of the season. Yeah, um, Josh scored a touchdown. I will never forget that moment ever in my life. Yep. Um, Do you guys have that football? Ooh. Do you keep the football? Maybe, probably. Okay. They're currently in a box. Okay, I'll awesome. <laughs> fish that one out. <laughs> we'll cut. We'll chalk that one up as moving. <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah, so that was the only game I got to go to. Mm-hmm. Um, it actually, and then when playoffs came around, they played Dallas in a division game. One of my bosses was a massive Cowboys fan, and I was like, "Look, if you let me go, I'll get your tickets." And so, did that happen? Yes. Oh, <laughs> so I got to go to the Dallas game, and then unfortunately, I had to work for the NFC championship when they played the saints. 
um, yeah, to this day, I think that's probably my biggest regret was yeah. not fighting harder to be there. But mm-hmm. you know how this industry yeah. goes. Um, so yeah, I was in a war room watching him win the game to go to the Super Bowl. Uh, but I did get to go to the Super Bowl, mm-hmm. which was an experience. Yeah. Um, we sometimes joke that he played in the worst Super Bowl in Super Bowl history um, <laughs> with that mighty final score, 15-3. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, so, you know, we just need to get the Lions to Super Bowl so he can have another go at it. That's yeah. what I keep saying because he's like, I mean, I did it. I played in a Super Bowl. And it's like, yeah, but I feel like you really missed out on what a Super Bowl <laughs> is supposed to feel like. I mean, let's be honest. Like, uh, from Maroon 5 being the performance, just everything. Oh, gosh. It they, was like, they took so much yeah, we just Yeah, we just really missed the mark on, like, what a Super Bowl is supposed to <sighs> to be yeah at least that's how I look at it that's hilarious yeah no that's a very calm way of looking at <laughs> getting to one of you know the granddaddies of them all right um and you guys did that with with Jared Goff as quarterback yes. so when yep. you learned and you had a stop in Nashville a briefer stop yep. where once again you found your way you were um a personal trainer for burn yep. boot camp down there yep. watch all your stories <laughs> um need to know how to get a six-pack after this <laughs> um okay so when you guys heard that you're coming back reuniting with jared goff i know from an outsider perspective everyone was so damn excited yeah can i say damn probably everyone was so excited yeah. they're like they have rapport they yeah. have this chemistry like like they're back right so what was your guys's reaction to that um it was a whirlwind mm-hmm. truthfully i don't think you can actually understand what those 24 hours feel like from when you're released from a team Mm -hmm. to finding out where your next stop is going to be. Was it that quick? Oh, it was very quick. Uh I think Tuesday morning, um, he asked for his release from the Titans. Mm -hmm. Um, and by that afternoon, his agent is calling us saying, Hey, we have seven, eight teams calling saying they're interested, but as many know, the way the waiver wire works is, it's by or- it's, it's in order. Yes. Basically, the team with the worst record that puts in a claim for you, that's the team you end up going to. Mm-hmm. And so we had a strong feeling that it was going to be Detroit. Pretty much all signs were pointing yeah. towards Detroit. Um, I know he ended up taking a few calls from a few other teams, you mm-hmm. know, just in case he made it past that 24-hour yeah. period. Were you in the room for those calls? Um, I was with a, for a few. Okay. Um, but I think he just in his heart knew that that this was the place that he wanted. Mm. I can't, it was the strangest thing, like even go after going through, you know, six months prior when he was a free agent and having to figure out what his mm. new team was going to be, it this just felt different. Here yeah. he was in a situation, not totally being able to choose his fate, but to a certain extent also be able to. Mm-hmm. He was just so all in on Detroit reuniting with Jared. And I think he just felt like, he really could help this team, and that's all he wanted to do. That's yeah. all he's ever wanted to do. I mean, I'm biased, but I don't think there's a more team guy than Josh Reynolds. Mm-hmm. And that was who he was with the Rams. That's who he's always been. And that was something that he wanted to bring here mm-hmm. and just help them win freaking football games. Mm-hmm. That was his That was his main goal, and that was ultimately why he – he loved it here mm-hmm. and that is why then we're back here because you know at the end of the season we were technically free agents again but mm-hmm. he didn't even make free agency because he was so damn sorry I'm saying it too <laughs> determined to come back to Detroit <laughs> why is that did he tell you why he loves the culture here yeah. I'm getting like goosebumps again thinking about it and just fully falling back in love with football mm-hmm. um and just enjoying the game again like being able to watch him I don't think for the rest of my life I will forget I was actually in the bathroom, first play of the Bears game when he was on Thanksgiving, Mm -hmm. and I was coming down the stairs, had just gotten to my seat, and I see Jared snap the ball, and I see Josh take off on a go route, and I was like, oh, it's happening. Please catch it. It's happening. It's happening. Like, that's all I kept thinking was, like, it's happening. Mm -hmm. And seeing him catch that ball, get a touchdown, like, tears just immediately came in my eyes. It just kind of felt like such a God moment of Mm -hmm. him truly bringing Josh to this team, to this place. And that's carried him through it. I mm-hmm. mean, he knew in his heart the whole time. He didn't even entertain any other offers, talks with any other teams this um, off season because he knew Detroit was the place he wanted to be. Did you learn real quick what Thanksgiving in Detroit is all about? Yes. It's great, I, right? It is great. It's like, different. Okay, like side note for a couple seconds. Uh-huh. The city of Detroit is great. Michigan amazing right yeah. like everything about this state i'm like wait this is a hidden gem oh you want to come to michigan you don't you really don't no, want to come to michigan out, no, stay away go to texas ours. go to texas like everyone else is <laughs> you got wine country up north if you really want right. it you have some like snow mountains you, you technically have beaches like we have be- beaches with lakes which for me 
ideal scenario. Okay. I'm not great I'm with salt water. I'm glad you accept that it's a beach. Yes, it is a beach. It's a beach. Yes. A lot of people don't want to own up to that because it's not an ocean. No. They're beach like, means sand. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Back to this crazy journey <laughs> you guys have been on. What What is the, the dynamic like um, with, your, with you guys when you know – free agency might be coming yeah. up or like you said you don't know there's so much unknown right so from your standpoint are you just I don't know treading lightly are you just not saying much um how do you balance that it's you have to be comfortable with the uncomfortable to mm-hmm. be in this industry and even to live this life you know unfortunately a lot of people know and in mostly joking fashion, but it is true that the NFL stands for not for long. Yeah. Um, and so that's kind of just the mindset you have to have because most guys are done playing by their early 30s, mm-hmm. if not before. And so to just take it for what it is and know that this is a chapter of our lives. And for me, I knew that in this chapter, I was going to support him at every inch, every step of the way that was what I wanted to do was support him and Mm -hmm. make sure that he was able to live out this dream of his as fully and best as he possibly could. So while unknowns are scary, you kind of get used to living in them. Mm -hmm. Um, I've learned and figured out my own habits. Like when I move to a new place, I go and find my places. So I find my coffee shops. I find restaurants that I know that I can go to on my own. I just find my grocery store. Grocery store is a big one. Like Mm -hmm. those are just the little things that you just kind of learn to help you adapt in your journey of, you know, consistently moving. Mm -hmm. And this is no shocker. You found another job while here in Detroit. I did. Working for our neighbors. Yes. The Detroit Tigers doing their social media now and their beautiful graphics on there too. Yes. So that was kind of ironic. Again, maybe a God thing. Um, (laughs) Back in January, I saw them post the job. Okay. And, you know, Josh and I, again, we were optimistic the whole off season that mm-hmm. we would end up back in Detroit. You're right. That is um, off season is looming. In yes. January. Yes. And so I saw the job and I was like, maybe it'll still be there. And then once he signed with the Lions in March, I saw the job was still available. Mm-hmm. Um, one of actually, this is like how small of a world it is. The woman that worked underneath me at Angel City had taken a job with the Pittsburgh Pirates. So she was down at spring training. I asked her, hey, poke around and get a feel for the Tigers organization for Mm -hmm. me. So she did. She ended up um, getting me in the name of my now boss, Greg Garno. Mm -hmm. And I shot him a message on LinkedIn asking if the job was still available. Because you know how teamwork is. Sometimes job openings will sit there forever. And yes, and it's a formality. Um, And so I would reached out and he was like, no, it's still available. And I think I had... One conversation with him um, the next week with opening day being the following week. And I was pretty much hired shortly after. And I've been their graphic designer ever since. Like, yeah, just don't stop. I mean, shout out to them, though, for allowing me to work remote from opening weekend until Mm -hmm. the end of June when I could actually move up here. I mean, we made it work. And yeah, it's been good so far. And I think what's really cool for me about going to Tigers games, Mm -hmm. because I've never had that much of an attachment to the game of baseball, um, as I've always been such a passionate football fan, lover of the game, Obviously, my fiance plays the sport. So, like, I've always been so invested in football, whereas baseball for me, I can just appreciate it for Mm -hmm. the 100 year game that it is. And the fact people show up no matter what is not only a testament to a Detroit fandom, Mm -hmm. but B, just the game of baseball. Like, it really is a beautiful game. And I think I've gotten to see that by being their graphic designer this season. Of course, you have. Okay, last but not least, we have to go through Josh's. Oh, his nicknames. Josh has a few nicknames. Mm -hmm. Um, Very, very strange nicknames, let's be honest. But I can see all of them. We knew about Big Smooth. Yes. With a V. With a V. We knew that. But we have recently come to learn that he's also called the Praying Mantis. Yes. And the Spider of Death. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite? And Freaking Serpent. (laughs) Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. (laughs) Which, Which, all of which, like, I'm pretty sure, of course, you know, people on Twitter, they're on their P's and Q's. Yes. We're like, I'm pretty sure praying mantis eat spiders and then so serpent think and then serpents it. can eat the other ones. So it was like, so they were just like, what is he? You know what? He's all of them. Okay. Okay. But he really likes praying mantis. He really does. does. He, he just kind of reminds me of a praying mantis. Like he's, because he's very long. He's very tall. He's very uh, like 
lanky. Yes. Um, and especially even on like the football field, he's deceptively fast. Yeah. He's so tall uh-huh. that it doesn't, he's not like, you know, the shorter receivers that their no, legs are moving he's fast. T- he's as tall as our tight end. Yes. Like mm-hmm. he is a very tall guy. Yeah. So those strides, because he also ran track in high school, he mm-hmm. was a hurdler. So he, is that the word for you? For I think You're so. a hurdler, right? Hurdler. If you, yeah. Or it you run, different, you ran but... the hurdles. Anyways. So Both. one of the two. Yeah. But he went to state multiple times for that. Mm-hmm. And so he's very deceptively fast, which gives me that like <laughs> praying mantis like concept I guess so I definitely can understand that one and I think he likes it like he was like mantis like oh god do we have a shirt coming for that soon <laughs> um yes yeah, so I've just des- I've designed one myself uh-huh. um we'll see how it goes but there that quote is on there I can show you when this is over okay. what it looks like <laughs> I'm excited you just listened to another episode of off the record with Danny Rogers a new episode drops every Tuesday